Hello. It is so great to be here today and I'm excited to be here because I'm actually here with someone else for once. It's not just me um, talking all about PR, but I thought it would be really useful um, to bring on my friend Prosper Taravinga from Live Long Digital because he has used PR um, since starting his business and he's had a lot of success with PR and he does his own PR. And the thought came to me when we were talking about Source Bottle and I was getting some questions around um, the expert platform with Source Bottle and whether or not it was worthwhile to invest in that. And I thought, I know Prosper has been doing that and he's been having a lot of luck with it. So I thought I'd get him on to chat about that, but other things too. So I'll introduce you to Prosper. <laughs> hey, Prosper, thanks so much for joining me today. Katie. I I really, really appreciate your platform. Thank you so much for your time. It's the second time, right? It is, it is. If anyone wants to learn a bit more about Prosper, um, we did a Business Between Bells podcast. I think it was episode 11, it was a few months ago now, but it was a great episode. Thanks, Prosper. And it really, your story is just amazing. And it was great to talk about that, but also to talk about what you're doing now with your business. So, yeah, if anyone wants to sort of get a bit more background, please check that episode out. I'll actually put a link to it in the comments. Um, so, yeah, everyone can check it out. But, Prosper, can you just firstly just tell us a bit about you and your business before we get going? Absolutely. And I, I want to thank you once again for, you know, letting me be on your show again. Uh, so, yeah, my story, my story starts off maybe eight years ago when I arrived in Australia. And when I arrived in Australia, I knew no one, all right? So that is the predicament that a lot of business people have. Nobody knows you. Nobody knows what you can do. Nobody knows how you can help them. And this is why PR is really, really important. So I went on a spree to try and get me found, get known, and to actually spread a, a message that I thought I had then. But as you evolve and as you grow, your message grows with you as well. So um, I've hung on to the PR side of things, uh, which is trying to move on that message, but the message has actually changed. So what I do now is literally I create products and services that help small to medium businesses get found in the same way that big businesses actually get found um, either online or using Google yeah. as a platform. So we do that through modalities like search engine optimization. We do that through a lot of PR and we do that through uh, social media. So all of that comes together and you'll be hearing about it as we and, and you know unpack what it is that I actually do and how I help other people have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Awesome. No, thank you so much. And I think that the point you make there around the fact that, you know, your your experience is so tangible, the fact that you came to Australia and you didn't have the contacts, but a lot of people starting out in business will say, oh, I don't have contacts, you know. I, but in this case, like, you really had <laughs> no contacts at all, so you had to. There was no other option but to do PR and to do other forms of marketing to get your name out there. And your brand out there which was a great thing yeah because you've done such a great job of doing that um thank you i i also wondered prosper so what actually in terms of pr did you know much about pr before you got started with your business and did you think about getting someone to help you with it or you just decided that this is something that you had to do on your own and went out and did it on your own absolutely well that's a really really good question because a lot of people have an understanding of what PR might be and might not be, all right? Mm. Um, I will tell you exactly what PR was to me when I first got here. Everybody was becoming an influencer, sort of, and it was getting started in that sort of era. And there used to be a whole uh, period where people would have 60 seconds of fame, all right? Mm. You know what I mean? And now it's 15 people, I mean, 15 minutes of fame. Now it's 15 people getting 16 seconds of fame. So yeah, my first, yeah. Yeah, my first uh, thing that I did was jump onto the modeling bandwagon. With that, it was also a way of meeting up with new people and 
I realized that every weekend they would, um, you know, put out a call out and say, hey, we're looking for people that look like this so they can fill out certain roles in either a magazine or certain roles in, um, you know, in, in, in a newspaper um, story or certain roles in a TV show. So for me, that was the easiest way to be in front of an audience offering my value and expertise or whatever it is that I had back then. Okay, so that already automated me or already, you know, taught me to put myself out there. And it's also like an adrenaline rush. Every time you see your name in the credits, every time you see your name, um, you know, in the paper or your face in the paper, you want to do more of it. So <laughs> and not everyone does. So I I work with a lot of spotlight shy um, entrepreneurs who don't necessarily get that adrenaline rush. Do you find that there, do you ever get nervous about putting yourself out there and putting yourself out there for media opportunities or is that something that sort of comes quite naturally to you? It, just like anybody else, you know, being in, in front of the public eye is not an easy thing, especially in Australia where we have, um, you know, the tall poppy syndrome mm. or that sort of um, approach to life. So it's yeah. never easy and you never get the feedback or you never know what people are actually thinking. Um, but more of the stuff that I have been doing has been aligned to my character, you know what I mean? So there's play times when I am seen at shows like Yuzi and Kate, um, and they're a funny bunch, all right? They're talking yeah, about yeah. life and just drive time radio. So they can just invite me to come in and maybe speak in an African accent just to break the pattern for people a little bit. Um, it, it's not necessarily about my job, most of the things that I get to to end up doing, you know what I mean? It's, it's more yeah. to do with, um, who do people say you are and what is it that they are hoping you can be of value to their audience about? So it's just how I've presented myself, how I've, you know, made my brand come out as, um, yeah. if I go in as my own self, I cannot be shy, but if I'm going to pretend to be somebody I'm not, then there's always going to be that, uh, aspect of, um, uh imposter syndrome so yeah. you you've got the cameras in front of you and it you know if it's not who you are it, it it makes it very hard for you to to pretend especially when you've got the spotlight in front of you yeah i'm so glad you mentioned that because i spoke about that um a fair bit in our class too around that is what i have seen in my experience makes a really good media spokesperson someone who is themselves and happy to show up with quirks and all um, and I see you as someone like that. You know, you, you show up as yourself and that is what is endearing. It's um, You can tell, I think, those people are kind of putting on a bit of a front or kind of just, re you know, reeling off words or a script, whereas you know when it's the real deal and someone is, yeah, being themselves and that is both sustainable, something that you can keep up, but also the thing that's going to be quite endearing to everyone else. But now, Prosper, I just wondered if you could talk a little bit about your business and how you've approached PR with your business. And I know that you've used Source Bottle. Um, I'm going off the quick questions here a bit. <laughs> but you have used Source Bottle um, as a tool to sort of, I guess, look for media opportunities. And this is something I spoke um, to the students about in our class one. So how have you found Source Bottle to use? And yeah, can you give us a little bit of insight into that? Absolutely. So Source Bottle has two sides of, of it um, being a platform that it is. It is a platform where experts, you know, like myself or yourself can find, you know, other uh, publicity opportunities where you can uh, either contribute to a journalist that's you know trying to write a story based on what it is that you are capable of or what you're an expert in. Uh, journalists are always looking for uh, content that will uh, make themselves look unique. You know, we now live in a in a in a very noisy platform or in a very noisy environment. So if your story is unique and if your story is relevant and timely, journalists are always looking uh, to be the first to print uh, with a story like that. So Source Bottle is one of those places where it's an easier way for journalists to to just put out an, an a, a request 
and yeah. people of that expertise can then show up and say, hey, um, you know, maybe we can have a chat, um, you know, based on what it is that you're looking for. Now, one one thing about platforms like that is you get what you give, all right? Mm. What, you, what you put in, the amount of information, time, and effort that you put into, um, you know, creating and crafting a really good profile, the more your chances of being found are. It's not a set and forget platform where you just, um, you know, go in and maybe create a, a, a profile and then forget about it. Um, yeah. There's also a provision that you can actually have a expert profile that, um, you know, you pay for, I think it's about $25 yeah, uh, yeah. A, a month or something like that. That only just puts you ahead of everybody else. So you sort of jump the queue. But yeah. if your profile is not well written, if your profile is not really depicting or convincing enough for the journalists, they might not just pick you. So platforms like um, Source Bottle are just a hub while journalists are on the way to go somewhere. So your job, if you really want the publicity, is to make sure that you're marketable, you are easy yeah. to understand, and you are not constantly available, but you're flexible. Because yeah. Because journalists might have a time limit yes. um, when they need to put the story out there. Can you imagine a, a journalist coming up right now with a story that happened last week? They're no longer relevant in their space. So, you know, yes. if you're agile enough and you're flexible and all your contact details are easy for people to find you, then um, chances are you might actually, um, you know, be found on that platform. Mm. But but it's it's not just a matter of you're there and then chances are going to come through uh, as soon as, you know, as soon as uh, an opportunity arises. So I've made Source Bottle a part of my daily routine. The email comes in at 9 a.m. and yeah. at 3 or 2, 2.30 or something like that. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So yeah. throughout my whole day, I'm doing my work and I'm doing everything else, but I've actually allocated 9 to 10 and um, two to three as the time that I'm actually looking at my emails for my whole business. So, yeah. right, you know what I mean? So now I've already trained myself to anticipate that email, all mm. right? So that means every single day, whatever comes in, even if it's not relevant to me, I actually then use that as, um, uh, as, as, cause I've got about 36 clients that I work with. If, if, if a call out is not relevant to me and my business there, I don't just hold on to it. I pass it on to somebody else. So I'm yeah, value. Yeah. To you. Okay. Yeah. So maybe I have an accountant who is part of, uh, you know, my, my clients or my community. And I know that they could benefit by being in front of that, you know, that journalist or that call out. Yep. Not only is Source Bottle now just enabling me to be in, in the public eye, but it's also making me look good to my community. So it just really depends on how you want to look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I'm so I'm so glad you mentioned that because I know I mentioned that um well just the point definitely around the regularly checking and but the making use of these platforms and these things because I have heard people say it feels a bit spammy or I just keep receiving all these emails and but you have to make a point to look at them and it's only when you do that and you actually respond that you're going to find that you get results so I'm so pleased that you mentioned that um, and then I love what you said about them sharing that with your community because I often do the same thing. I'm like, oh, gosh, that really suits that person. Or, um, and it's just a nice way to know for them to know that you're thinking of them but also to share that opportunity because hopefully something will come out of it. Um, so, Prosper, what has been your success then with responding and actually getting, um, I guess, yeses and has media come out of that? And yeah, I'll ask the next question after you answer. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. So, so like I yeah. said, it's um, nobody owes you anything, all right? So nobody owes you a response in life. And any opportunity that you get, you really got to hold it with both your hands because it is a gift to actually yeah. be seen amongst all the other people that could have been sitting in that position. So if you take it like that, then everything right. becomes uh, okay. But I'm afraid maybe us as millennials, we're entitled you know what I mean? That if I send an email, they've got to respond. Um, 
I think I did a, a check while you were talking to me. I actually have 17 articles in the age, and I think there's oh. about 24 articles that are actually written with my name and leading to my business in the Sydney Morning Herald and a few other um, sort of um, articles here and there. And some of them have actually then become, I've actually made this whole publicity as part of uh, you know, my day-to-day -day existence, all right? If, I, if you would just excuse me a little bit, part of my decoration in, in, in the office is, is when, you know, um, a little write-up in the newspaper where uh. <laughs> it was me and my little girl. So, um, <laughs> and it was talking about how dads are working uh, from home um, which is part of what your port your podcast really is. So it yeah. doesn't it doesn't matter whether big or small. We are all human, and we all need to know the same things. So um, yeah, when a when an opportunity comes in, make yourself available, uh, make yourself ready, uh, have the right information so that the journalist doesn't have to go digging deeper because they don't have that time. All they just yeah. want is, hey, are you there? Let's go to town with this yeah. uh, topic. So st you always got to stay ready, um, you know, to um, you know, so, yeah, so that you don't get ready. Like, yeah, um, and then be reliable, as you said. So with that, that's amazing. So 17 pieces in the age. Um, and has that come through the one, because I imagine what has also happened, has that come through the one journalist or have do you think that they've now said, oh, Prosper's reliable and sort of spread it amongst their contacts too? So you're kind of that person now that they'll pick up the phone and call when they want to talk to someone about SEO or digital or small business. Is that what sort of has happened? I think because, first of all, my name is easy to remember. And second of all, my name is, I, I always respond to just about everything else. I think they have just had a coffee break and they're like, you know what, if you see this guy, just give him a shot. Um, <laughs> but but, no, what, but that is great. And that is what I say to my clients, that you want to be that person that the journalists go, we know they're reliable. We know that they'll give us a good quote. Um, so, yeah, you are going to be the go-to person. And people do say to me that they want to be the expert in their field and they want the journalist to be calling them. And that is how you do it, that you are that person. And as you mentioned before, you're agile. Super important that you can pick up the phone and respond and get back to them quickly. Um, so, yeah, I'm really glad you mentioned that too. I think that, that is really, really important. Oh, absolutely. So um, I think... 80% of all the call-outs are coming from the one journalist that yep. I think has me pegged for stories like that. Um, I'm usually the first to comment when Facebook makes changes. I'm usually the first to yeah. comment when there's something that has to do with social media and um, how it affects um, people. So I'm, I'm usually the business side that's called in to comment. And um, the, the best part ever since was the 2020 roundup. I think everybody wanted to start uh, 2020 with a bang. I got so many emails, so many calls from people I've never even heard of saying either they've seen my content somewhere else or they've seen me on such a, such a platform and they want me to um, have a chat, you know, with them. So it, it, it's now become uh, part of my KPIs, actually, because every single day I have to um, tick off things that I'm doing. So one of my KPIs is how much media did I create? Not that it's become an addiction or not that is what, but the more people get to know, uh, like, and trust my message, the more people get to be referred to me by their own accord and make the decision, it makes it a whole lot easier for me to then reach out either to them or for them to reach out to me and say, hey, listen, I've seen you, I've heard about you, why don't we start transacting or let's do business? So Yeah, yeah, because that's really interesting. So I have had a conversation with a few people lately and someone actually in my podcast recently, and she found for her that PR was more about converting, well, more about building trust with her existing audience but also converting those people who were kind of on the fence those people who had heard about her and were kind of lingering um lurking is the right term lurking around and consuming her content but hadn't kind of made that transition over to actually becoming a customer 
Um, and I wondered, is that something that you find too, that it is great for your existing audience or is it better for you in actually reaching out to a wider audience or both? Great, 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 great question. So, Katie, when you started your business, right, you went off and I think you were in a startup incubator where you had that sort of group of people as your first test audience, all right? And then you went on and got that award, which I then caught on to, oh, wait a minute, this is Katie and she actually lives close to me and she's doing all of these things. And you were the first person I reached out to and I said, hey, hold on to my business card. You're going to need it all. Give me yours so that I can be in touch with you. All right. So it's it's things like that. All right. Mm -hmm. That make it easy for you to be found by people that would not have, uh, you know, crossed paths with you. Like literally you you probably can hear me speaking in my my office right now because you're, you're literally across the road, right? <laughs> Based on the fact that of our proximity of where you live and where I live. But had we not been, had you not been out on that particular day doing that thing that got you publicity, not a lot, I, I wouldn't have, we wouldn't be having this call right mm, now. All so right? true. Yeah. All right. We wouldn't have had this conversation. Now, there's one thing that I've, always, always sort of taught myself with regards to uh, business and how it actually works, all right? So if you would look at the palm of my hand, I don't know um, which side of the screen I'm looking at, right? If you would look at the palm of my hand right now, this whole section of your palm is your product, your message, um, everything else that comes along with it. The first little segment here is your family, your relatives, um, all those people that are close to you that like you but might not buy from you but may be able to refer you to um, people that, you know, uh, are willing and able to purchase your services. Then you have this sector of your little finger here. This is the mass market. These people don't care, all right, about who you are or whatever it is they do. They just want something that works, all right? They want something that's tried, tested. Am I going to plug and play um, into this segment of the of whatever you're doing uh, and, and get the results that I want. And then we have this last segment here. These are the luggers. These are the people that no matter what happens, no matter where you are or what you're doing in life, and up until they have no option, they're the ones that would then say, hey, listen, Katie, maybe I need to jump onto this PR bandwagon, all right? So for us to cross into all of these little sectors, we're going to need so much leverage. And by ourselves saying, look at me, look at me, this is not going to cut it. So that's why we need people that already have platforms, people that already have an audience that is willing and able to jump onto whatever it is that we've got uh, going on for ourselves. Uh, by ourselves, we are not able to literally sp scream um, our own credibility. We're not able to scream our own um, you know, relevance into the market. We need other people. We need other platforms. We need other um, establishments yeah. that have already yeah. curated an audience. And amongst that audience, we're hoping that they are people that are willing and able to become our customers in there. So that's... that's yeah. Yeah, and that is great because that all comes down to the third-party endorsement, which I've talked about with the group, which is essentially what PR is. It's about sharing your story through a third party, and that is the power of it. And you can't put a value on that third party. Um, having someone else say that, yeah, this is this is someone someone else sharing your story for you or someone else saying that you do an amazing job at this particular thing, um, and that is really the superpower that PR has. So in terms of, I guess, for you, Prosper, and your business, um, what would be, like you've talked about quite a few things there about the benefits of PR and why you use it, but what would be like the one reason why you continue to do it? Because you've now got a lot of coverage and you've got journalists coming to you, but why, yeah, what is that one thing that motivates you to keep doing it and why do you think it's important that people keep doing it rather than just like do bursts of it here and there? Absolutely. it's the same reason we're having this chat here today, Katie, right? Why would you take time out of your day to create value for people, all right? What would you take time out of your day to help other people have a happier existence? Katie, why would you even care to be on this call with me today if it was not 
um, going to help somebody uh, be, do, and have a either a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So when your mission and when your story becomes uh, bigger than yourself, I would ask you, who am I to stop me from putting that information out there? Somebody might take notes from this call right now and go out and create a business that would actually be the creator of or the creator of the, the cure for cancer. So I would have sparked that, um, you know, ignited that idea or sparked that motivation for them to go out and do something else. So who am I to sit here in my own office and, and sit back and not uh, try and reach out to people that could uh, benefit from the, the yeah. that I'm putting out there. So yeah. it, it's no longer about, Hey, look at me or whatever. I mean, seriously, there's so much content about me everywhere you look. I've even cut my hair to be undercover, you know, <laughs> <laughs> to be a master of disguise. But this is, you know, the time I was on um, Channel 9 repeating my story again. So half of these things, then it becomes bigger than you. It becomes yeah. more of a calling. It becomes more of a how can I help as many people as possible in as little time as I can. And that's the power of publicity. Yeah, yeah, that is amazing. And it is also, I love what you were saying, like, you can sit in your office and not share and be part of the conversation, but then in a way that's almost a little bit selfish because you're not participating and you're not actually giving the knowledge that you know over to other people. So I think that that's really important too. And just that whole factor that if you don't share your story, you don't share your knowledge and skills, then you're not, how is your dream clients going to find you? They're not. So, um, yeah, love, absolutely love that. So, Prosper, just finally, the last question is just, is have you found doing your own PR hard and is it something that you would encourage other people to do and is it a big time investment for you? Absolutely. So one of those things in business, first of all, it's never a one-time uh, endeavor where you put out a, um, a um, press release and hope that people will journalists will triple stumble and fall uh, on your your content or your business or whatever it is that you're trying to put out there. One thing that I found really is it's an ongoing endeavor. Okay, in as much as you create new things within your business, all right, you're gonna want people to to know about them. All right, so you're not just gonna uh, bask in the glory of the PR you got in January when it's you know December, or you're doing um, um, you know all those last minute sales for Black Friday. All right, so it's something that you have to continuously keep moving, keep progressing, and always putting yourself. Um, in people's, um, you know, in, in front of people that are willing and able to purchase your services, okay? But the one thing about all of this that I really, really want um, to reiterate is you don't have to be always changing who you are just to suit what the journalist wants at that particular moment. It will catch up to you later on down the track, all right? Um, there was a time where um, I don't know if this is a platform to talk about this, but there's always news coming up, something happening. Maybe it's the fires in Australia. Sorry for those that would have been involved. And um, there's maybe the pride conversations that were happening. Whenever you take a stand towards something and then later on, it, it turns out not to be the thing that is needed by publicity or by the public or your customers and everything else, it might just be fire. So if you really sit down, look at what is it that you actually value, right? And whatever you're doing out there, make sure you're encouraging people's dreams, right? Make sure you're justifying people on whatever they failed. Make sure you're aligning with people's fears and make sure you're confirming people's suspicions. All of those things are important to validate who you are as a brand. And if you stand for something, make sure that's who you are and that's what you stand for through and through, all right? Yeah, not, I agree. Not yeah. having to jump on and jump off uh, when, whenever it suits, all right? So you got to have a message, right? Now, this message is predominantly 
what is it that you're actually selling and who you, and 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 what is the outcome of what you're selling and how does it benefit anybody else out there and you gotta have a market that you need to reach out to because not everyone is your customer all right so if you're maybe seen on sunrise today but the only people that are watching that show are grandmas and granddads that have only just woken up is that going to be of use to you yes you've gotten massive publicity but was that useful all right so you really want to make sure even if the publicity is that small because anyone has a, has a media platform right now okay make sure it's relevant to the people you can serve make sure it's yeah. relevant to the people who's paying your business can actually be of value to because we get paid in direct proportion to the value we bring into the marketplace so if you just show up with no message yeah <laughs> and with no market that it's specific to it might just not be of use you've just wasted first of all your time and everybody else's yeah. time is watching uh that particular segment yeah right? oh gosh yeah i i couldn't agree more and i am sorry to, but i couldn't agree more because and this is something actually i'm so pleased you mentioned because it's we, we talked a bit about in our classes about intention and always having an intention for each um, we were talking in regards to podcast interviews but any media interview you do you go into it knowing why you're going into it and also knowing what you want that audience to walk away with what do you want them to remember about you or how do you want them to take action and that is why, and I'm, yeah, Rapture mentioned that because that's what it's in the PR classroom for class one. That's what we talk about. It's all about setting a PR plan and making sure that every single bit of media you do basically has a return on investment in that you are talking about your particular um, service or brand or offering or cause and that that gets across rather than, as you said, like just getting a piece on sunrise for the sake of it. And nothing else coming out of it of course it's always going to be brand awareness but yeah you want to do really really purposeful pr so thank you for mentioning that crossbar i think that that is yeah really really important <laughs> oh absolutely but above all make sure you're doing good work for people who actually care because pr mm -hmm. exposes you all right it puts you in the <laughs> forefront of other people so if you're not ready to serve those people make sure you at least have a way to collect the email address for when you're ready for them okay yeah all right so when you are put in front of a podcast or whatever it is just have something on your website that collects that person's information because most of these people don't don't quite know you yet so you want to make sure that you're getting a return by then following up with these people and making the most of whatever publicity you might have garnered you know just like um right now if 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 i didn't have um you know the proper websites or if i didn't have the proper uh tools that would then uh make somebody say oh, i've seen or i heard this person on katie's uh podcast or or group let me go look him up if i don't have the correct um tools to then capture either your details or keep you interested in what i've got more to say then that pr is wasted pr above all have the right intentions have the best product um there's no point in inviting people to a party and you don't have the needles for them it's just wrong people will just stick around for a minute and then they'll go somewhere else where maybe the music is good or the food is better for them etc etc so figure out who you really want in your house who you really want um to work with or work for and just go out there and do work that matters for people who care amazing uh thanks so much prosper that's a really great way to end actually because that's just such an important message um i really appreciate you coming on today because it's just great to hear from someone who has well, firstly done their own PR um, and secondly got amazing results. I think you're pretty modest when you talked about your results before because I see you everywhere, like in Smart Company and on TV and all sorts. So that is really remarkable. Um, and I think that I love what you said about making time for this every day 
that is brilliant and they're just ensuring that you're the best possible candidate for the media, that you are the one that the media will um, turn to or ask for comment because they know you're reliable, they know you've got a great story and that they know that you're always going to provide really knowledgeable quotes on your area. So I hope everyone got a lot out of that. Um, is there anything else, <laughs> Prosper, that you want to add? Or? Oh, I can't thank you enough for oh. this publicity that you have actually, um, you know, passed on to me. And if there is anything that I can possibly do to elevate your platform too, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you. I'm just going to get some of those media contacts off you after the after the call. Then <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, that that is so awesome. And thanks so much for everyone who joined. I've just opened up my phone and Lisa and Katrina, thank you. And anyone who's watching um, the replay, it's just um, Prosper, please I'll put a link to the podcast episode. He's just got such an amazing story. And um, I just love the way you do business. And I also love the fact that you don't take it ever for granted and you don't, even when you're talking about source bottle and like that that is a platform so you don't take it for granted so you make the most of it um, and you do the same, I know, with every element of your business and I think that's something that we should all, you know, take on board and do. I just love the way that you were so positive and do business that way. So thanks again um, and... <laughs> Yeah, if anyone's got any questions or comments um, when you're watching the replay, please leave them and, um, yeah, we'll get back to you. But thanks again, Prosper. And where can everyone find you as well? Absolutely. So, like I said, it's just a simple Google search. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've worked... Where can't they find you? <laughs> <laughs> I've worked so hard. But I've also created a community where I'm talking to small to medium businesses and really hand holding them to make sure they have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So it's um, it's just a little community. It's off of Facebook. Uh, it just literally does exactly what Facebook does. But on there, you can actually uh, create your own publicity, you know, write your own blog posts, put out posts for your own uh, sake. Uh, if you've got a podcast and you want people to jack up the numbers in the real world, things like that, we can also help you do. And if you've got a post on LinkedIn that you just put up there to get people to uh, like it or anything else, that too, you can also do. So if you type in the words community or uh, leadlongdigital.com.au, it's a, it's a mouthful, I know, but <laughs> at the end of the day, um, that community would be the hub that a lot of business people that are more like uh, me and doing better things, exposed to better quality sources of media, and they're also media platforms in and on themselves um, that you can also latch onto. It's not about who you are. It's literally about who you know, all right, and what you do with who you know and their connections and everything else. So if you're watching this right now, um, you're in good company with Katie. Uh, she's always on top of things and always making sure that everything works, um, you know, especially if you want a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So it's a good start. Um, but if there's going to be more that you want later on, there's always other platforms. Source Bottle is one of them. Um, and I know Katie is going to be continuing um, with her growth and creating and relating to those uh, that actually uh, would need a service. So thank you so much, Katie, for this. You have no idea how much, um, you know, I even wore a good shirt for this. You know, you never know when Channel 9 or when Katie is going to call and say, hey, let's, <laughs> let's be on the show. So um, thank you so much for keeping me up. No, no worries at all, Prosper. Thank you. And, um, yeah, thanks just for all that amazing, all the amazing insights you shared. And I just think it's great inspiration for everyone to see that we can all do this. We just have to put the time in to do it and just know, have a bit of know-how. And also I think something you can listen to um, in the podcast that we did is really also tap into your story and make the most of that as well. But thanks again, Prosper. Alrighty, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Bye. guys. Bye-bye.